So here we're going to look at a match from the Pan American Championships that took place the other day. On the left we have Lucas Icorn of Peru. Icorn is 16 years old and from what I can gather he seems to have spent most of his career training in the USA. This season was his first on the FIE circuit. He got a bronze at the Cadet Pan Americans but he hasn't achieved anything special in the junior age category, which is to be expected, to be honest, not many people get results that early. The exception to that rule, however, is the prodigious Colin Heathcock fencing on the right. Colin Heathcock has basically completed the junior age category, so to speak, when he was still a cadet. Now he is 17 years old and has switched from representing Germany to representing the USA. He trains with Christian Boer in Orléans, with the likes of Bazadze, Appetit, Theodosio, and many other top fencers. This season, he has made a last 16 and a last 8 in Senior World Cups. I don't know for sure, but I think he is probably the youngest fencer to ever do that in the men's sabre category. Anyway, as you will probably know, he is one of the greatest prospects the sport has seen in a long time, but this match does show that he might still be lacking in experience. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip to the end of the bout and then try and explain how we got to that point. So here we have an attack on preparation by Heathcock. Notice how Icorn goes in pretty deep without extending his arm, that's a pretty big mistake and Colin Heathcock is very good at punishing it. Heathcock is so efficient in his movement, he takes one hop in, sees Icorn is prepping and immediately attacks into it. The key thing here is Heathcock is attacking with his point first. He's not trying to do a big cut, he's really making it clear that his point is extending before his opponent. These pointy attacks are really useful for doing attack on prep because they make your extension look so clean to the referee. However, they do have one big drawback, which we will see next. These attacks are pretty easy to parry. The preparations here are kind of similar to the last one. Icon rushing in, not super balanced. He's got goes for a clean, pointy attack but this time Icorn takes for parry. The key thing to take note of here is that in Sabre attacking with an early point extension, while it does mean you hit early and it does emphasize the speed of your extension, these attacks are relatively easy to parry for two reasons. Firstly, you can basically pick any parry you want. You can knock the blade away from pretty much any angle. Secondly, all the tip acceleration is going straight forwards, so there isn't really any possibility of a tip whipping around the parry or being able to crush through the parry. Anyway, let's move on to the final touch. Both fences here, both fences prepare pretty fast, then stop. But then Heathcock, who is a bit more efficient in his movement, takes over the attack. Now, previously in this situation, Icorn had tried to race his opponent, trying to go back in for the attack faster than Heathcock could. But this had never really worked because he isn't quite as clean and efficient in his movement. So, what he does here is very clever. He makes it look like he's going back in for the attack, but at the last second he takes a big, fat, meaty parry riposte. Now for me the theme of this match was really how Icorn was making lots of mistakes, mostly stemming from his preparations being a little bit too wild, and Heathcock was basically just looking to punish Icorn for making those mistakes. Now Icorn could have decided, okay, I'm going to try and minimise these mistakes and try to fence a bit cleaner. But instead he decided not to worry too much about making those mistakes, instead focusing on using those mistakes as an opportunity to set up traps. I think it's a really good lesson on how to beat people who are technically stronger, so to speak. Colin Heathcock was playing a very reactive game. 
and reactive fencing tends to benefit the fencer who is technically more efficient. So choosing to be proactive, as Lucas Icorn did here, is often a good way to approach these situations. Anyway, I'll leave a full edited bout at the end here. You can tell me what you think in the comments. Thanks. Hangar, s'il vous plaît. Prêt. Behind the line, please. Prêt.
Bottle stop, for combat, for attack, for the two. On guard. Three. Are. Start the cross. Push a goal. One. Ongar, attack push, push. Ongar, press, ale, ale. Ongar, press, ale. Attack in the preparation, attack in the preparation. Ongar, press, ale. Behind the line, please. Angar. Pre, Alex. 